So essentially what you're doing whenever you're going to be um, reducing radicals, so you might have something like, say, x to the fifth. Basically what it's asking is it saying, because we're square rooting it, we're saying how many pairs of x are in x to the fifth? That's one way to think about it. So um, let's look at a kind of a numerical example. If I was asking, well, what's the square root of 64? I would say, well, if I factor out 64, I get 8 times 8. So there's this pair of 8s right here. So every pair of 8s I can take out and only have one 8 left. So this pair will join forces and do whatever it is they do, and then they'll become just one 8 there. Um, if I was saying something like, um, what's the square root of, oh, I don't know, um, how about 8? If I was asking what's the square root of 8, well, you could factor out 8 and say that 8 was equal to 2 times 2 times 2, and then you find pairs. Since it's a square root, square root has to do with the number 2, right? Square, whatever. Um, there, that's pretty. If you have a square root, it has to do with pairs. So here's a pair of 2s. So I can pull this one out. And I have one, two left. So this is the pair that I pulled out. And I'm left with one, two on the inside. Similarly, you could say, well, what is the square root of, a, I guess, a 10? You could say, that's not what I wanted. How about 12? Square root of 12. You can say, well, if I factor that out, that's 2 times 2 times 3. Here's a pair of twos. That'll come out. So that pair of twos will come out. And then I'm left with this three here. And he stays inside the square root sign. Okay? So that's kind of how this process works. So going back to our problem that we were talking about was x to the fifth. So one way to do it is to say, okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five x's. So I've got a pair of x's. This pair will come out. I've got another pair of x's. This pair will come out. And then I've only got one x left at the end of the day. So I've got this x that came out. I have this x that came out. And I have one x left inside. Anything that makes a pair, I can pull it out. So I can simplify that and say, well, that's equal to x squared, square root of x. So that's one way to think about this. So this would translate, well, let's try anything more. So if we had something like, well, what is the square root of x to the 11th? You can make all your x's. You've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I have a pair here. It'll come out. I have a pair here. It'll come out. I have a pair here. And I've got a pair. So I have a pair here. And I have a pair here. And I've got one left over. So I can say, well, here's my first pair that I only represent one, one of them. Here's my second pair. Here's my third pair. Here's my fourth pair. Here is my fifth pair. And then I'm left with one that didn't have a buddy. So I can say, well, I can simplify this to one, two, three, four, five. X to the fifth square root of x. Now there's another way to think about this. Um, one way to think about it is to say, well, since I'm looking for pairs, I don't really have to go through all this process. If I look back again at x to the fifth, square root of x to the fifth, one way to think about it is I have five x's, and I need to divide them into pairs. So I'll divide, and I say, well, that's two, and then that's that. So I have two remainder one. So what that means is if I was going to go through this whole pair process, I would have two pairs and one left over. So what I could say is I have two pairs and one left over. So I have two pairs and then one 
left over. And that's the same thing that we got here. Two pairs and one left over. Two pairs and one left over. We can do the same thing for, say, x to the 11th. For x to the 11th, I'm saying, okay, I've got 11, and I need to pair them off. So 2 goes into 11 five times. Craziness. 2 goes into 11 five times. 10, 1. So 5 remainder, 1. So that means I've got five pairs and one left over. So I could say that square root of x to the 11th was five pairs and one left over on the inside. That's the same answer that we got here. Five pairs and one left over. So that's kind of fun. This can be really useful whenever you're um, doing uh, roots that aren't square roots, but that are other numbers of roots. So you could try, say we had um, x to the, I don't know, what's a good number? How about 9? And I'm taking a fourth root. Okay. I'm no longer looking for pairs. I'm looking for sets of four. And that's what the four root means here. It means I'm looking for sets of four. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine x's. Here's a set of four. Oops. Here's my set of four. And here's a set of four. And I've got one left over. Oh, that should have four right there. So I have a set of four, a set of four, and one left over. So that means I have a set of four, a set of four, and one left over. Or I have two of these now. I have two sets of four and one left over. Okay. You can use the remainder division thingy too if you want to think about it that way. I've got fourth root of x to the nine. So well, I have nine, and I need to break them up into groups of four. So two, eight, one. So I have two remainder one. So I have two groups of four and one left over. So I can say that the fourth root of x to the nine is I'll have two groups of four. That's your two groups of four, and then I'll have one left over. Reasonable? One left over. You can try this uh, with anything, really. Say if I had, um, that's a good one. I like that. How about x to the 11th? You can multiply them all out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I can look for groups of 3. So here's a group of 3. Here's a group of 3. Here's a group of 3. And here are 2 left over. 2 left over. So that means that I've got one group of 3, another group of 3, another group of 3, and two left over. X times X times X. X cubed. I have three groups of three and two left over. So again, you can try that with long division. But the cubed root of X to the 11th. I've got 11 X's and I need to put them into groups of three. It's going to be three. So three remainder two. Again, that means I have three groups of three and two left over. So I can say that the cubed root of x to the 11th means that I have yeah, that I have three groups of three, three groups of three, and two left over. So hopefully that'll give you a little bit of a start to have some fun simplifying rationally.